It's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and pass the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. In this project scenario, you are selecting a messaging service for log messages that must include a final result message ordering as part of building a data pipeline on Google Cloud. You want to stream input for five days and be able to query the current status. You'll be storing the data in a searchable repository. How should you set up the input messages? So in this question, we have to select a messaging service that will scale to a large amount of data that is streaming continuously for many days. And there is a particular requirement on how the message should be stored. Let's go dig a little deeper into the requirements. So we have to select a messaging service. Typical choices would be PubSub on Google Cloud or some of the other open source options like Kafka or RabbitMQ. The final result should have message order. So the main requirement is that we ensure that the data is in the same order in which it originated. You want to stream input for five days. So the data is going to be continuous. We have to have a system that is capable of handling large increases in data, large volumes of data. One of the requirements says that we have to be able to query the current status. For me, this was not very clear. What status are we querying? Where are we querying it? Um, we will see if the options gives any clues or whether we can just ignore this part. You will be storing the data in a searchable repository. So the data is going to be analyzed later, probably sorted by time of messages. How should you set up the input messages? So the question here is, how do we ingest the data that is coming in? What do we need to have to ensure that we get the final result, which includes the proper message ordering? Having understood the requirements, let's move on to the options. The options contain a few key uh, parts that are repetitive, right? So this is one of those questions where if we identify the similar parts, we will be able to quickly eliminate some of them. So one of the options is to either use PubSub or to use Apache Kafka. The second set of options is we attach a timestamp with every message or we attach a unique identifier. Let's first look at a comparison of PubSub and Apache Kafka. Now, the general recommendation is that when you're moving to one of the public clouds, unless there is a compelling locked in reason, you sh your first choice of technology should be one of the managed services, right? It reduces the amount of administrative overload and it will also be able to give you potentially if managed well, they will be able to give you the latest technology and take care of things like security and it brings in all the other environment uh, features like IAM, storage and all of that. So between these two, Apache Kafka is an open source solution that will have to be installed on some infrastructure service. So you'll have to set up a Google Compute Engine instance and you'll have to administer it manually. That usually should not be your first preference. Cloud PubSub, on the other hand, is a fully managed, highly scalable messaging service uh, provided by Google Cloud itself. So between the two, Cloud PubSub should be a first choice because there is no particular requirement that we have to stick with Kafka. So among these, we can eliminate option C and D, which has Apache Kafka, and retain options A and B, which uses Cloud PubSub. Among A and B now, we need to choose whether we attach a timestamp to every message or we attach a unique identifier. What will give us the ability to have a final ordering that is the way we want it in this requirement? There are a few things we need to understand before answering that part. First thing is that, Irrespective of when the message is sent, 
there could be significant differences in the network that causes latencies and therefore the time of arrival of the message could be very different in this case we have got the red message green message and yellow message all being sent at the same time however by the time we receive it it is the reverse order so we can see that the red message sent at 01 reaches at 13 and the green message sent at the same time reaches at 6 and the yellow message reaches first at 3 now there are different cases based on what we need to get done now let us say that the order of processing does not matter at all right each of these messages are completely independent and we don't care which one came first and which one we process first this would be the easiest we can process these messages without any additional con uh, considerations if the red one came first okay process it and move it out of storage if the yellow one came first process it and move it out of storage so this is convenient very little to do then there is a case where the order of the process messages matters now this is very complicated because if the order in which we process the messages matter it is dependent on when we receive it possibly this sent in this order right they sent first red then green then yellow at seconds 1 2 and 3 however because of network latencies they come in the reverse order now when we process it we are not sure if all the data is currently available let me give you an example let us say somebody asks you to go into a classroom and pick up and say you know uh, bring or name the kid who is the tallest in the class so you go to the classroom you see about 20 students there and you are ask him to stand up and you say okay he is the tallest and you get his name and you deliver it to whoever asked for it but what if one of the students was late right maybe his the the traffic and he got delayed getting to school so now there's a 21st kid who's taller than all the others but who wasn't available when you were doing the computation of who's the tallest so what you're left with is wrong information right you pick this person who was the tallest at that point in time but it wasn't complete yet in the same way when you're working with these systems possibly all the data has not arrived yet so if you do a computation to find what is the maximum or what is the sum or what is the average you're going to get completely different results because all the data has not arrived therefore this requires a lot of additional work where you have some temporary storage or some way to figure out that okay we are going to wait for maybe half an hour before this data comes otherwise we're just going to continue it does not ensure absolute correctness but it will give you something to work with for the present the next case is where we do not care about when it is processed but we care about the final order so one of the cases would be if you are storing log messages there could be log messages come from multiple systems and they could arrive out of order but in the final system we want to ensure that it is ordered because we want to ensure that the log messages display things in the order of how it happened now in our requirement it says that the, it must include final result message order which is essentially this case right we want to ensure that the final order of the message is proper so let's break the case down right so now we've got these messages that are being sent at second 1 second 2 and second 3 which arrives uh, here on the 13 second here on the 6 second and the third second for red green and yellow so we receive it in this case in the opposite order of how it was sent but we want to be able to then have this in the same order in which it was sent that is the requirement okay. so let us consider the option b which says we attach a unique identifier to every message in the publisher now there are multiple publishers right in our example let us say that the red message was sent by the red device green message was the green device and yellow message by the yellow device so with 
these publishers, if they are going to have to send a unique ID and that unique ID did not include a timestamp of any sort, then they would have to coordinate among themselves to figure out who sends next and who gets the next incremented value of that unique ID. Now, this is not, of course, feasible, right? If you're just having a unique ID, and like I said, it does not include a timestamp, then it adds a lot of uh, extra complexity to the system, which is not easily solved. Therefore, this is not a viable option. It would also be wrong if we attach a timestamp when we receive the message. Okay. To get the final order, we say, okay, let's add a timestamp as soon as we receive it. But that would be wrong because the timestamp that we are going to add is going to be the reverse of, in this particular case, it's going to be the reverse of when it was sent. So option B just does not work for us. Option A suggests that we attach a timestamp to every message in the publisher. So in this particular case, this is exactly what we're doing, where in the message that was sent, at the time it was sent, that value is added. So even when this message is received here out of order, it contains information about the time at which it was sent, which can then be used in the final storage to ensure that it is in sorted order. Therefore, this works for us and the right option for this question would be to use Cloud PubSub over Apache Kafka because it is a managed solution and scales very well too. And in addition to that, attach a timestamp at, from the publisher side at the point that you create the message and send it. If you thought that content was great, you absolutely must check out all our new upcoming content. So subscribe right away.